I think I think it's subtle things that you know that sort of feeling that the, the world isn't getting better or when I see something that's unjust and you think how the heck do we change that? Our armed forces ain't as big as they used to be, our navy isn't as big as it used to be, we're not a superpower like we used to be, we're just this little island that thinks it's big and really we're not, you know what I mean? And every other country in the world knows that we're not what we used to be. I was, I'm born in the, the late 60s, so I remember the, 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 troubles of the, the, the troubles in Ireland, I remember what happened in the 80s, I remember the miners' strike quite well. I remember the riots that we had in places like Brixton in the 80s, I remember the death of PC Blakelock, which is you know, a current thing in, in law, in, in the courts. Um, and it's saddened that things don't change, they just keep coming round again and again and again. North East as a whole, it's, a, you know, it's a, an area built up on shipbuilding, mining. It's quite depressed at the moment. I mean, although the rest of the country is supposedly coming out of this recession, we aren't. We don't see it up here. Um, there used to be a uh, greyhound track next to the um, where Morrison's is now, next to the football ground. Uh, that's gone. Um, a lot of people don't have jobs. Um, a lot of depression. I took the pub over about six years ago for no particular reason. The pub doesn't make any money. It's a rubbish town for people coming out for a drink. Nobody seems to seems to really care about anything, so they just do what they want. So up here, it's, it's more community up here than there is downtown. Um, because Hartlepool was the main port during the Napoleonic Wars. Um, Somebody, in their wisdom, went away and decided to create this, this fable. Every, every town needs a story, and it's uh, a society for us. Well, it's up in, up in Ardley Pool about the time of France. The Emperor Napoleon was leading all the dance. Went up along the coast came a British man of war and the captain's own good monkey got washed up on the shores Now the Lord Mayor of Ardley Pool was walking down the shore when he saw this funny thing he'd never seen before a sitting in the sand was a little hairy man clutching a banana in his little hairy hands Now Constable Parsons, he hurried to the scene He viewed the situation and he licked his pencil clean He said causing a disturbance is a serious offence And everything you say will go down in evidence Sing it old folks, young folks, every man in each Come to see the Frenchie who's landed on the beach He's got long arms, a great long tail, he's covered down in hair We think that he's a spy so we'll hang him in the square difficult. Isn't the truth difficult? You know, anything about yourself that is true is something that you've got to face up to and it's even harder when, yeah, people find the truth difficult to believe, to, to deal with. Half of people will tell you that the story is the traditional story um, and other people will say, oh, it's just a story. Personally, I think something happened. Maybe not hanging of a monkey, but I think something happened, but, and, and it's just kind of snowballed into this legend that we have now. But um, there, there could have been another dark side to the story of the monkey, you know, because uh, there was kids on the ships at the time called the Powder Monkeys, who were also dressed as soldiers or sailors. Um, did they hang a monkey or did they hang a kid? I mean, Powder Monkeys, you're looking at about 12 years old, 14 year, years old, so about that age. Um, and when you kind of enter that whole thing about it, it does make it darker, it does make it a bit more serious and a bit more, well, it's, it's no longer comical, is it, you know? I think if it was true, um, we might distance ourselves from it. <laughs> but I think the myth and the fable about it, because nobody really knows, I mean, did we? 
We don't know. Well, I mean, I've always believed the historical version, which is that the, the, there is no, there is no, there is no event of a, a ship being wrecked in the Napoleonic period and a monkey being brought ashore and hung. Myths change. One thing about myths that you've got to realise is they, they change all the time. Well, what people do is they make them into something that means something to them. But everybody will feel very importantly connected to that. And uh, woe betide anybody, including myself, who, who sort of, um, you know, runs that story down. It's a legend, it's our legend, and they've kind of embraced it, and I think the townspeople of Hartlepool know that it's a little bit silly, and, and they kind of embrace that, and they kind of have been able to start laughing at themselves because of it, and they're not taking it too personally nowadays, and it's kind of acknowledging it that's a bit of a legend, and trying to make it a good legend in its own right. Comical story, isn't it? At the end of the day, you know what I mean. These idiots from that small town in the northeast let the younger monkey. But uh, I don't know. People say it as they say it. You know what I mean. It, it is a funny story, I suppose, so to speak. A bit cruel to animals, like. But uh, it is what it is. I think everybody's, every generation's added a little bit on to the, the myth, the fable, and that's why it's grown. I mean, when you first came in, there's a, a little mosaic up on the wall there. Now, a friend of mine as a daughter was very, very good at art. And for a birthday present, I gave her a mosaic. Just a box full of bits, glasses, glass beads, all sorts. I said, there you go, something for you to do. And a week later, she said, I made you a present. So I went over and I went, what's that shit? Well, it's a Hartley Bull monkey. Well, she was 12 years old, she's not even a football fan. Somebody had said to her, he supports a Hartlepool, and she's come up with this monkey mosaic. So it doesn't matter who you are, the monkey is associated with Hartlepool. There is a sense of pride in it because, not because of the content of the story, but it's that self depreciating, poking fun at yourself sort of feeling that communities in the north, and particularly the northeast, have. Um, it's part of that sort of community identity and remember that the monkey legend spread because not because it was told you know in, in the Victorian period but because it spread through the rugby and football clubs uh, with that sort of defiance of other teams around the country um, so yeah it's, a, it's something that people took, take, do take pride in Um, if somebody else came in and took that identity away, I think that would hurt the fans, the club, the town quite a bit. So we need to we need to maintain this this identity of the monkey. What makes Hartlepool Hartlepool? So they've kept the story going because at the end of the day, without the monkey hanger story, Hartlepool has no identity. If we didn't have this. You know what I mean? What would the town be like, to be honest, if we, if we haven't got that that history and the story. I mean, you can you can mention the monkey hanging story to anybody in the country, and they know that you're talking about Hollywood. It's a quirky, it's a quirky thing that the town embraces, and uh, that, uh, that's not going to change for a long time. I, I come here, to watch the football, enjoy it, embrace with the crowd. We score, we cheer, we like to mingle, and, and the fans like it. The kids love it, and it's obviously a good thing. It's bringing money into the town. So, yeah. so it's a traction we've got. It's changed a lot since I was a kid. We've got an indoor town shopping centre now, whereas when I was a kid we never used to have one that was all outside. Um, so yeah, they've spent some money. But yeah, people do, people are interested in it across the entire world. There's something about that story that, that is attractive across different cultures, which is another really strange feature of it. Tall ships in 2010, there were a million visitors here. We had a million people, and those people came from all around the world. And I remember being hugged and carried along by, by a group of Malaysian sailors who could, didn't speak English, I didn't speak, I didn't speak any of their languages, and yet people were joining in together. 
It'll always be, Hartlepool's always, Hartlepool will always be famous for the hanging of the monkey, regardless of what anybody else tries to claim.